I'm Jenna McGregor, Senior Editor at Forbes, here at the Milken Institute Global Conference. I'm joined today by former American Express CEO and Chairman and Managing Director and Chairman of General Catalyst, Ken Chenault. Thank you so much for being with us. Great to be here. Yes. I want to ask you, we're facing another debt ceiling crisis in Washington. You obviously have a long history of leading a major finance corporation. You were involved in the Obama administration on the Jobs Council. I'm curious, just from your point of view, sort of elder statesman, CEO, um, what, how concerned are the CEOs you're speaking to? Should they be when it comes to the state of the debt ceiling negotiations right now? Well, look, I think, I think everyone should be concerned about the consequences of not having this resolved. I think CEOs are concerned. I would say one of my major concerns is there's such divisiveness, not just between the Republicans and the Democrats, but within the parties. There are also a great deal of divisions. Mm -hmm. So I think people are assuming that everything will be worked out. I certainly hope that is the case, but I think we all understand the economic chaos that would be created if we don't come to terms. But the fundamental issue is if in fact, and I'll just say it, if whether McCarthy can deliver if there were negotiations. But my view is that we should raise the debt ceiling and then negotiate. Okay. That to me would be the preferred course to take. Do that first. Then, Do that then first. Negotiations. Then negotiate. Do you think he can deliver? Excuse me? Do you think he can deliver? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I hope he can, but the reality is, as I said, the preferred course of action would be to raise the debt ceiling. That certainly happened under President Trump, yeah. where the Democrats agreed. I would hope that the Republicans could do the same thing. Mm -hmm. That said, if that does not happen, what will be important is, can McCarthy deliver even if there is agreement? Right. And right. as I said, I want to be very clear, I don't think that there should be negotiations. I think the debt ceiling should be raised and then you should have negotiations. How is this different this time than, than negotiations we've had in the past? I think in, in the view? past, um, you had a more aligned party uh -huh. uh, that someone could deliver. Mm -hmm. on, on, on each side. On each side. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's a big question mark for me. Right, right. And how concerned are you hearing other CEOs talking about this issue right now? How big of a concern is I it? Think, I think CEOs are concerned. Some believe that the chaos that would be caused, that no one would allow it to happen. Mm -hmm. My concern is you have some people, I think, that maybe aren't aware of how much chaos would be created. Right. That's the concern. So you've talked, and I've heard a number of CEOs talk about just the concern of like the stability of a functioning American democracy, and like how important that is to business. How where where how big of a concern is that for you right now? You know what I would say is I I do have concerns about our democracy on a number of levels. I think one is we have become an incredibly divided country. I think second, that the truth and facts don't matter. It used to be people yeah. maybe were embarrassed that they were caught telling a lie. Mm -hmm. Now there's no embarrassment. Mm -hmm. And I think what we need in our democracy is, one, we need people who really believe in what this country stands for. Second, we need to have civil discourse in our country. And for business, 
I go back, I was very concerned, as I think many Americans were, with what happened January 6th. Yeah. I think it was a big threat to our democracy. And what is important for the American citizen and society is we have to focus on those ideals and values mm -hmm. of America. Do you think that business leaders have a bigger role to play than they are about speaking out about those issues? You've talked about voting rights and access to voting rights a lot in the past, but also this issue of stability and democracy. Do, does should yeah, business think, be playing a bigger role? I in? think, look, the reason why CEOs took a position on voting rights is because voting is fundamental uh -huh. to our democracy. Right. And so I do think there are fundamental rights where businesses should, in fact, be involved in upholding our democracy. Um, broadly, we're here at the Milken Institute um, Global Conference. We've spoken in here about the push towards skills-based hiring. You see an opening in the Inflation Reduction Act in chips and trying to, you know, get more funding to more jobs that, that have more of a skills focus. Um, tell me a little bit yeah, about so think, what look, role they could play. I think what's exciting is that there are going to be hundreds of thousands of jobs that are being created. But also what's important is that many of these jobs will require that for American workers, we help retrain them. Mm -hmm. That's going to be very important. So it's not just the acquisition of new workers and the skill training for new workers. It's existing workers whose jobs will change. And I think that's just a tremendous opportunity that we have. And I think that I'm starting to see some collaboration between the private sector and government, between nonprofits and for-profit companies. And what we need to recognize is that we have a tremendous opportunity. And I believe that putting people in jobs that are family sustaining, we talk about strengthening our democracy, that will strengthen our democracy right, right, dramatically. Right, right, right. Some economic soundness. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, you, you sounded a real note of optimism today during our panel um, about the impact that these could have on, on creating jobs and, and, and really creating the kinds of jobs right. that we need. Um, finally, just, just sort of help us understand, do you think that will balance out the, the impact that we're seeing with AI uh, and the, the kinds of losses that that could create and what the current economy is doing with, um, with impacting jobs? I, I think what's important now, and clearly AI is moving very, very quickly. Um, I believe we do need to be concerned about people being left behind. At the same time, I look at challenges as opportunities. And I think we have a real opportunity here to reskill, retrain. I don't think that there's going to be a perfect sequence in this, but I do believe that it is not a either or. It is an and. Uh -huh. Ken, thanks so much for being with Thank us. Thank you so much, Jim. Appreciate it.